Marcus, I've spent time in Sterot, so that's down for Australians at home, close to the Gaza border. So I can't imagine what it's like for families to have gone through what they've gone through over the weekend. Um, we know about the hundreds dead at that music festival. The abductions, the people taken back into Gaza, some horrific images we've seen here and around the world. Uh, what happens next? Now, as you know, Peter, Israel left Gaza in August 2005. They, they uprooted 9,000 people and that was done with hopes to live peacefully with the Palestinians on the other side of what is an internationally recognized border. But instead, Hamas took over the region. They committed to 17 years now of terrible violence, terrible destruction. So I think next is for the international community to get behind its removal, which it is doing for the sake of Israelis, Palestinians and, and the whole region. And, and I think when this is done, next is also for us to stop and for once and for all the radicalization of young people by UNRWA in its education needs to be put to an end because this is one of the key root causes of the terrible brutality that we have seen over the last few days. Yeah, what Marcus is talking about there for people at home is uh, worldwide funding into UN organisations in these uh, territories. We'll come back to that tomorrow night. There's a lot there in that. Amy, just quickly, how concerned uh, is, is Israeli government and others that while you're focused on Hamas in the south near Gaza, obviously in and around that area, that you'll be exposed in the north to Hezbollah? There was some noise from Hezbollah, uh, obviously, in, in the recent hours. Uh, and also, too... Is the American um, government, President Biden, seen to be doing enough and quickly enough to support Israel? Yes, yeah, certainly the, the border with Lebanon and the activity of Hezbollah is a huge concern. Israel is not blind to that. Um, you know, a lot of the reservists, the army reservists that have been called up over the past two days, um, you know, they're not all being sent down south. You know, they're also reinforcing troops in the north, reinforcing troops in the West Bank, um, you know, replacing troops that are being sent down south. So there's an eye on that border, certainly. And, and we even saw when, you know, when Biden spoke that he made sort of very pointed comments about, um, you know, warning anyone in the region. Uh, not to take this as an opportunity. Um, and that was widely seen as being uh, directed towards Hezbollah. Um, in terms of U.S. support, you know, uh, there's aid on the way. They're sending munitions. They free uh, directed some warships. Um, you know, I don't know if there's a question of doing more or doing less. I think the Israeli people are grateful for U.S. support. Um, and I think we're also just waiting to see how things play out and how long this goes on. Marcus Chief, Amy Spiro, thank you for your time. I stand with Israel. Um, the vast majority of Australians stand with Israel. And we send our thoughts and prayers to you at this very difficult time.